Praise the Lord and uh, welcome uh, to uh, the Karigima on this second day in the month of October in the year of 2022. So we are here to um, praise the Lord and to acknowledge that it's because of His mercies that we are, are here uh, today. I want to uh, remind you that um, God is able, uh, if we trust Him, that God will do um, uh, for us what we ask of Him. And of course, we have to ask according to His will. It's not everything that we ask for that God is going to do for us. And uh, we must uh, uh, be aware <clears throat> of that. But I want to thank you all for joining me uh, this morning on the Kerygimum. Uh, I know there are some prayer requests that uh, you may have and we have we're always encouraged uh, our people that if you have any prayer requests that you want to send to us, you want us to pray for, uh, you can send them to the Kerygimo, the Kerygimo uh, 146 um, at gmail.com. We will definitely uh, answer why the, what your questions will be or we will um, pray uh, pray for your prayer for your prayer request that you will ask us to join you in so today is a, is a beautiful day and i just want to praise the lord for his goodness for his love and for his mercy uh, God is merciful and his mercies endureth for forever. You may um, have woke up this morning perhaps not feeling well uh, and many probably feeling under pressure because of certain things that are going on around you. I want to encourage you today that as uh, I minister God's word, you will find that encouragement, that you will find that healing, that you will find that you are brought closer to God so that you can trust God even more. God needs to be trusted. We, we need to trust God in all what we do. Let, let, me, let us pray uh, as we begin this program. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for today. We ask you that you will open our understanding, that as we look through the scriptures, we pray that we are not just run through the scriptures, but give us understanding. May your Holy Spirit, who is teacher, come and teach us the deeper truths of the word of God. We ask it all in the name of Jesus that the devil would not rob us of our understanding of what the scriptures are teaching us. That we do not only understand the scriptures, but we do what the scriptures instruct us to do. So God, have your own way. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to deal with a very important subject. It is important because... Uh, there's been some many discussions and many books written on this subject and uh, sometimes we we don't know what to do that when we face that situation we don't know whether we should pray because we don't believe God doesn't do it anymore or there are those who believe that uh, well, it was just for a particular moment in time that God did that. He doesn't do that anymore, any longer. But we're going to look at God's word because God, the scriptures tells us that God does not change. And I want you to bear that in mind because the teaching that I want to bring to you uh, this at this moment is in line with that because if God changes then there are so many things that are going to change that God says to us but the very nature of God is that he does not change so I want to talk about healing divine healing and I want to pose 
the question today is divine healing for today we live in a world that changes from moment to moment in a world where new challenges face us every day but does God change can we really trust that he will be the same today and tomorrow and forever can we really trust in that right as I said earlier on healing is a subject that seem to um, uh, divide uh, Christians uh, because they are those who believe God no longer heals. They acknowledge that yes indeed he healed in those days in the Old Testament and even in the time of Jesus and when it comes to uh, the uh, our present time there are those some of them very genuine believing that but we're going to look at the scriptures does the scripture support what they propagate this is not a moment where we are going to castigate anybody that you don't believe in healing so you are not a christian that's not the essence of this this teaching in fact let me declare right up from the beginning that the aim of this teaching is to show from the scriptures that God is both able and willing to heal the sick, the diseased, and the infirm. It's God's will. God is able. I want you I want you I want you to understand that this is the emphasis of this teaching that God for me to show from the scriptures that God is both able and willing. Remember those two words able and willing able in that God can do anything except sin he cannot God cannot sin I wanted to understand that but God is able because the scriptures teach us that there is nothing that is impossible with God what is impossible with men is possible with God and scriptures teach in the New Testament as well as the Old Testament that is that there is nothing too hard for God there's nothing that God cannot do we're talking about positive things here not negative things God is able now I've over the years personally experienced this blessing of God's healing power there are many times I've fallen sick and I have prayed God has healed me and I've prayed for others at times and God has healed them but they also I must acknowledge that there are times when I have prayed for others and God didn't heal them but that does, does that change who God is the answer is no God is the same yesterday and today and forever and that's where we need to uh, focus on we need to focus on God not on the diseases not on the healings but on God what does God say about himself concerning our sicknesses how does God reveal to us how does he reveal himself to us with regards to our infirmities with regards with our with regards to our he, uh, our sicknesses how does God reveal himself to us so the foundation for the topic of divine healing lies not so much in people's wonderful experiences and as thrilling as this may be it lies in the scriptures the Word of God and that's why I want us to look at those scriptures remember the focus is not healing okay healing is what God does but the arguments have gone back and forth God has not healed he did that um, and there are those there are some 
Christian brothers who, who, who believe, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about those who do not believe, but there are some Christian brothers who believe that God, Jesus healed and the apostles healed because they wanted to demonstrate the power of God in the early beginnings or the early days of the church. God wanted to show his power. The question then becomes, Does God has God stopped? That is God no longer um, going to demonstrate his power in this generation? God does not change. So we're going to answer that and we will look at God's word. I'm, I'm tell, uh, you, you, you will agree with me that uh, you have at certain times fallen uh, sick maybe a loved one and maybe somebody close to you died because of sickness and they may even have prayed you see they may even have prayed to be healed but they they they, they, they died anyway is that god's fault is it because god could have not healed them does it change who God is with regards to our sicknesses? Now, when you read uh, the, uh, I want to straightforward read Exodus 15 and 26, verse number 26. Because here it says, God said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, this is Moses actually speaking to the Israelites is telling them, giving them specific instructions of what they should do. If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Okay? I am the Lord who heals you. Here God identifies himself to Israel in a variety of names and ways, but here he reveals himself to this people, to his people rather, as Jehovah or Jehovah Raphael, the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. That's what God says to these people. And in fact, he says the same things to us. If you think of it, from the time we were born, the diseases and the things that we have gone through, we can testify to the fact that it's been by the mercies of God. Think of the times when medicines were not readily available to people, but God still kept them alive. They survived some of those uh, devastating moments in their lives. They, God uh, spared their lives. Why? Because God says, I am the Lord who heals you. That's the emphasis. Remember I said earlier on that we must focus on who God is. That's how God relates. Of course, he's speaking um, to, through Moses to the Israelites and he's telling them to be obedient. They have just left Egypt. They have seen the miraculous power of God as they were delivered from the land of bondage. And now they are on this long trek to the promised land. And they are going through situations. And here as to, as if to encourage them, uh, uh, not as if God wants them to trust him. They are concerned uh, they are in the wilderness. And here the instructions were, if you listen carefully, listening is important. To which voice? To the voice of God, not to every voice. There's so many voices beating for your attention. 
The voices want you to listen to what they are saying. But here specifically, if you're going to have life, if you're going to be close to God, you must listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, in the eyes of God. Do what is right, not pretend to do what is right, but do what is right. If you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on to the Egyptians, on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your God. That's where you must focus on. Healing is not just something that God does. No, more than that, healing is part of God's nature. That's who God is. He's a healer. How do we know? He says, I am the Lord your God who heals you. I am the healer. That's where my emphasis is. When you are sick, when you are um, um when you have infirmity, when you have uh, anything that is uh, contrary, uh, uh, that is not good health, if I put it that way. Remember this one thing, God is a healer. That's who he is. That is one of the attributes of God. He heals. Okay. But of course, the question can be asked, does God heal everybody? Or all the time? The answer is no. Okay? We have examples, especially in the case of Paul. Paul prayed for whatever problem he had. He prayed and sought the Lord three times for the Lord to heal him. God didn't. What did God say instead? God says, my grace is sufficient. Okay? So I've just answered that question. Does God heal every sickness or every uh, prayer answer in terms of uh, healing uh, that is going to heal you? Sometimes God doesn't. Sometimes God does. Sometimes God heals instantly. Sometimes he doesn't. But when you look at the example of Paul, Paul is one, he prays for so many people and they're getting healed. But when he presents his own situation before God, God doesn't heal him. Does that change who God is? Oh no, God is still the healer. The very fact that even Paul prayed that God heals him is because he knew God is a healer. So that out of the way, uh, sometimes, because sometimes can, it can be the argument, somebody says, I have been in this situation, I have, I, have, I have been a cripple, I have been sick with these diseases and I've prayed, I'm a Christian, I love the Lord, I save the Lord and he hasn't healed me. So they have concluded that because they have not received the healing or because they prayed for somebody and somebody did not get healed, it's a sign that God does not heal. No, remember how God reveals himself. I'm the Lord who heals you. You may say, well, he spoke that to the Israelites. Well, he may, yes, he spoke to the Israelites, but he revealed who he is, that he is the God who heals. That's what I want you to get into your mind. Even when you are praying, I want you to understand that it's because you believe this God, the God Jehovah, Yahweh, heals. He's Jehovah, Rapha, the God who heals. It was not only for that particular moment of the Israelites, it's for all time and eternity. God is a healer. That's who he is. He cannot change from that. He heals. That's why we must have 
that faith to believe that God will heal us. God is for us, not against us. Yes? In the matters of divine healing, God is with us. He says, I am the Lord who heals you. God was and God is and God will continue to be a healer. Remember always that you serve a healing God who has declared that his intent towards you is not to bring you, to bring on you the diseases, but that the Lord heals, will heal you from those diseases. I am the Lord who heals you. So there is no room here to think that this, when we say uh, things like that, that we are pulling the, uh, the vase out of it, its context. Yes, we, we realize it was spoken specifically to the Israelites. Okay, but it's what God said about himself that we take out from that. What is it that he said? I am the Lord who heals you. God's heart towards his people is that he will heal them. And uh, because of that, we have to trust, we have to ask God for healing. Will God heal us instantly? If he chooses, he will do that. Will he, he, will he uh, say to us, my grace is sufficient? He will do that if he chooses. But I have seen in my own experience, I've prayed for myself, I've prayed for my family, I've prayed for friends. I've seen some of them getting healed. But I also have to be honest, the times when I have prayed and nothing has happened to that particular people. Does that change who God is? No, it doesn't. That's the very reason why I believe that God heals today because it doesn't change who God is. Who is God with regards to our sicknesses? He's a God who heals us. Okay? And I want you to to, to to hold on to that truth. Yes, I, 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 I'm sure your experiences have been terrible. Mine too have been terrible. There are certain things I have prayed for in my life. They are still there. Of course, not sinful things. But infirmities, the sicknesses that we all suffer from because we live in the fallen world. Remember, sickness came as a result of sin. And God dealt with sin on the cross of Calvary. That was the very reason and purpose why Christ came. But along that, in that atonement, sicknesses were covered. Why? Because even before God sent his son Jesus Christ to come on to come and die on the cross who was God God was a healer I am the Lord who heals you that's who he is that is his attribute in Exodus 23 verse 25 to 26 we read the following worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water I will take away sicknesses from among you and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full life span. What does he say? The things he mentions, God mentions here is I will take away sicknesses from among you. Why is God doing that? Because God is a healer. If he wasn't a healer, he would have no power to remove any sickness and disease. But that's who God is. Okay? That's who God is. It's one of his attributes. He is unchangeable God. He does not change. 
if that's how he revealed himself in the Old Testament, even before the New Testament came, that he was a healer. And when the New Testament comes, he's still healing. I strongly believe then that God heals today. He heals today. That we can pray to him for healing. Remember what he said is very, very important. What he said is very important. He says, if you listen, this is the instruction that he gave. If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes. If you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will bring I will not bring on you any of these diseases. We have to be obedient. That's, that's, that, that's what we give back. We, it's our obedience, not just to obey because I want to be healed. No, to obey the commands and keep all his decrees. It's a relational thing here. It's a covenant that God makes with his people, not all in the Old Testament, but even here in our time today, we have to listen carefully to the voice of the Lord and do what is right in his eyes and pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees. God will heal us. It's in the context of healing that I'm teaching uh, this. So he says, worship the Lord your God and his blessings will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full life. You will be fruitful. If you obey God, you will be fruitful. Does it mean you are not going to go through a certain difficult situation? That's not the context here. That's not what I'm teaching. I'm teaching on healing. I'm teaching on healing that God takes away our sicknesses. And how does he do it? We have to worship the Lord our God and his blessing will be on our food and our water. Worship the Lord. And how do we worship the Lord? In spirit and in truth. That's what Jesus says. That those who worship the Lord will worship him in spirit and in truth. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 11 to 12 and 15 says this, Therefore, take care to follow the commands, decrees, and laws I give you today. If you pay attention to these laws and are careful to follow them, then the Lord your God will keep his covenant of love with you as he saw, as he saw to your far, forefathers. Verse 15, the Lord will keep you free from every disease. He will not inflict on you the horrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all who hate you. He tells them that while they were in Egypt, they were inflicted with diseases. They, they, they were sick just as we are sick today. But what is it that God wants us to know from here? He says, therefore, take care to follow the commands. We must follow the commands and decrees and laws that God gives us. If we pay attention to the laws and are careful to follow them, then the Lord will keep his covenant. God will keep his covenant. What is that covenant that he will keep? The covenant the Lord will keep is that we are going to be free from every disease. God is going to heal us. Okay. God is going to heal his people. When they become, you need healing because you have been inflicted or you have infirmity, or you have disease. And what does God say to you? He says, if you keep his decrees and commands and follow them and pay attention, it's important here. We have to emphasize every word 
that has been said and pay attention to the laws and are careful to follow them. It's not just knowing about them. It's about doing them, doing the commands of God, doing the law of God. Some people will say we are no longer under the law. That's not the context here. The law here is to, to be obedient to all what God commands us to do. Not some things, but all things that God commands us to do. So there he says he will not inflict them on all. Uh, he, will, he would rather inflict them on the, all who heard him. In Acts chapter 10 verse 38, it says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. What did God do? God anointed Jesus. We need this anointing if we are going to exercise this ministry we need the anointing just as jesus was anointed how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under him under the power of the devil because god was with him god was with jesus and jesus went about doing good wherever he went he healed the sick Jesus healed the people and healing all who were under the power of God. So we can un we understand that God is for us, not against us in the matters of divine healing. God heals. Okay? God heals. That's my emphasis. My emphasis is not the healing itself. The emphasis is not sickness on itself. My emphasis is on God, that God is the healer. How do we know? Because he says it in his word. I am the Lord who healeth thee. I am the Lord who heals you. So God's spiritual healing power extends to all our diseases and infirmities. Listen to what Psalm 103 uh, verses uh, 2 and 3 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and does what? And heals all your diseases. Now here, the greatest of the Lord's benefit is that he forgives us of all our sins. Remember, I mentioned earlier on, and I'm going to mention it. That's why Jesus Christ came to die on the cross so that our sins will be forgiven. That's the healing that mankind first needs before the physical healing. He needs spiritual healing. But here, notice what the psalmist says. He charges us not to forget another of the Lord's benefit. That is the healing of our bodies, our six diseases. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not and forget not his benefits. Don't forget the benefits of God. What are the benefits? What are the benefits? Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? This is scripture, Psalm 103, verses 2 to 3. You can check it out. All our diseases, none are too hard for him. God heals them all. No illness are excluded from this great benefit. Whatever disease you or your loved ones may have, it falls under God's promise to do what? To heal all our diseases. If God can heal the most, the most, the, 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 the most things that separates us from God, it's not the diseases or sicknesses 
<laughs> the thing that separates us from God is sin. If God can heal that, don't you think God has the power to heal your sick body or sickness? I believe he does. Jesus died for both our sins and our, for, and, and our sicknesses. How do we know? Well, scripture teaches that. Scripture teaches that in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse number 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. Listen, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he was, he was rather pierced for our transgressions. It was our transgressions that Jesus took upon him. Ours, yours and mine. And he was crushed for our iniquities, not his iniquities, our sins, our shortcomings, our sinful actions was put on him and he was punished for that. And because of his punishment, his punishment brought us the peace. But you and I will enjoy and by his wounds, we are healed. First Peter 2, 24. Remember Isaiah says, by his heels, we are healed. By his wounds, we are healed. Peter here says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you were healed. Of course, here we have to, to understand uh, what Peter is saying. Peter is agreeing with what Isaiah says. Isaiah is prophesying perhaps 500 years before Jesus was born, or a little bit more uh, than that. But he is saying by his stripes we are healed. And when Peter is writing, he's looking back, Peter says by his stripes we were healed. Okay, we were healed of our sins, but also... Because God is our healer. He took all our infirmities when he punished Jesus. So that by what Jesus accomplished on the cross, faced to give us life, to bring us back to God, for our sins to be forgiven, so that we can live righteous lives. That's what he dealt with first on the cross. But also sicknesses were dealt with. It was Jesus' willingness to offer himself on the cross that bore our sins. But the very same tormented body of Jesus in his scourging and crucifixion, he purchased for us the blessing of physical healing. By his wounds you have been healed from sin, but also from uh, sickness. Some people will just say, well, Isaiah is only dealing with one aspect of the sin. That's not my argument. I have no argument against that. You see, yes, it was for our sins. But what I'm saying is that when Jesus was wounded for those um, who, it was also for our healing, physical healing. I notice the difference in the verb tenses used by Isaiah and Peter. Isaiah prophetically seeing these seven centuries, as I said, or five, seven centuries before Christ, by his wounds we are healed. The apostle Peter, looking back to Christ's historical death and resurrection, declares, by his wounds you have been healed healed look to god for healing why because god is our healer how do we know that he says it i am the lord who heals you god is saying that's who he is 
He is the healer. Okay? He is the healer. And that this is not just something that God does, but that is who he is. That's the very nature of God. He heals. Thank God that he heals. God responds to us when we say when 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 we're seeking healing. In Genesis chapter 20, verse 17 to 18, then Avram prayed to God and God healed Abimelech, his wife and his slave girls, so they could have children again, for the Lord had closed up every womb in Abimelech's, in Abimelech's household because of Avram's wife Sarai. Okay, uh, the story is here that uh, Abimelech wanted to um, have Sarai, um, Sarah, uh, yeah, Avram's wife, as one of his wives. And of course, uh, <laughs> the, the, the Abram, when he was asked about Sarah, they had already talked about it, that if he, anyone asked, tell them that you are my sister, not my wife, because if they know that you are my wife, they will kill me. But if they know you are my sister, my life will be preserved and will be preserved, and that's what they did. Of course he lied. Of course Abraham lies. And Sarah, it's not their first lie, they continue to lie throughout. You know, they continue to, to lie throughout. They continue to go God's uh commands um 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 every, every time. But here says Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech. Okay. Here Abraham does something good. Uh, he prays for Abimelech's household and God heals um, uh, the wombs of these women that they will be, they are able to bear children again. So, why am I uh, bringing this message? Well, as I said earlier, that the aim of this teaching was to show from the Bible that divine healing is in God's uh, that, that rather uh, that divine healing to show divine healing scriptures that God is able that God is both able and willing to heal that's my main emphasis but I've also answered does God heal every time that someone prays according to the experience of many including me some have prayed and have not been healed okay but the question, my emphasis is, the question is, does that change who God is? If it does not change who God is, then I encourage you to continue to pray, to continue to trust God, basing it on God that he does not change. God does not change. God's attribute is that he cannot change. Change from what? Okay, if God healed people in the Old Testament and in uh, in the New Testament, and in, 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 in does does God heal people today? The answer is yes. God still heals people. God still heals people. Otherwise, there is no point in you praying to God. Okay, praying to God, leaving it, that it's entirely up to God to do it. That's not the emphasis of teaching. The emphasis of this teaching is that you can trust God. And if you trust God, follow his commands and do what is right, God will respond. God will respond. Basing it on this, Hebrews 13 verse 8, 
shows that God does not change. And I'm going to close. If God healed, God will heal today. Why? Because God does not change. Why doesn't he change? Because he is God. Jesus yesterday, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 6. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. He tells them it's because I do not change. It's not because you have not sinned, but because of the covenant. Remember, he made a covenant. Because of the covenant I made with your forefathers, I'm not going to go back on those covenants. I will keep it eternally. Because I said it, I will keep it. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Nothing of that sort. He does not change. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said it? And will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will not fulfill? No, the scriptures I'm quoting here show us that God does not change. Isaiah 40, verse number 8, the grass withers, the flowers fades, but the word of all God will stand forever. You cannot separate God from his word. God is his word. And that cannot change. He says it will stand forever. Psalm 102 verse 25 to 27 says, Of old you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the wake of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe and they will pass away. But you are the same and your years have no end. Of course, God is not affected by years. But this is the, the psalmist. It's a human description. He is bringing out what he thinks of God. And the only way he can understand it is to, to use the words. But the key thing is, but you are the same and your years have no end. Which means you, you, you're not going to die. You live forever. You are the same. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse, uh, verse 13. If we are Faithless, uh, faith, uh, faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. He does not change. Isaiah forty twenty eight. Isaiah forty twenty eight. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the Creator of all the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Have you not known, have you not heard that the Lord is everlasting? Something everlasting is something that does not change. God does not change. Psalm 119 and verse 89. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Again, as I said, we cannot separate God from his word. Psalm 33 and verse 11. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Psalm 90 verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth. Or ever you had formed the earth. And the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Before the mountains were formed, were brought forward, 
you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting you are God you do not change your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth and it stands fast. First Timothy 1.17 To the king of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, God is the healer should we then pray to him yes yes we should pray for him and ask for healing will god heal us he will why because of his nature he heals sick people he takes diseases and sicknesses we can trust god I encourage you to pray for healing. I encourage you to seek the face of the Lord when you are not feeling well. Pray to God and trust God. The key thing is to keeping His commands, statutes, and obeying them. God revealed himself that he is the God who heals us. Yes, God heals. Will he heal you instantly? No, God will do it. Uh, yes, he can. Yes, he can. And uh, sometimes you want instantly but the thing is he heals you and when we are praying to God let's ask for healing on God's terms not on our terms okay because I think that's where we get frustrated on our terms we 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 we, we, we have worked out how we want God to heal us when we want it to happen and so forth and so forth but we should leave it on God's terms and know that God is the healer. That's all we need to know. And we, once we know that God is the healer, then we can trust him to do what he wills. It is his will. It's his intention from the beginning. That's why he introduces himself as the healer. He's saying, come. God, seek your healing. I'm here. I'm the healer. I cannot do that. I can only pray for myself. I can only pray for you and for someone else. I'm not the healer, but God is the healer. And God heals people on his terms. That's who he is. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters. Yes, some of you have said, well, you have prayed. You have been in that situation since you were born and nothing is going. That does not change who God is. God is a healer. He did not just reveal himself uh, because he wanted to heal people on that particular occasion alone. But he was saying that's who he is. I'm the Lord God who heals you. That's who he is. Are you, going to, are you able to trust him? Are you able to put your trust in God and say, God, you are the healer. You are Jehovah Rapha. You can go on. You are provider. I will trust you because of who you are. Okay? Not what you do, but because of who you are who are you the god who heals that's who you are okay and i want you to trust god in as much as i encourage myself let us pray father i thank you in the name of jesus i thank you that you are our healer that you heal that your name is healer the god 
who heals. Jehovah Rapha. That's who you are, God. That's, that's, that's what we should trust in. You are God who heals. And thank you for the privilege. Like James asked those people, is any among you, let them call for the elders of the church who will lay hands on that person, anoint them with oil and pray for healing. Yes, we, 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 we must pray for healing. Because God does not change. He's the same yesterday. If he healed yesterday, God will heal today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday if Jesus starts. But should you not feel well, I encourage you to pray uh, to God. Call your friends who you may trust those who are um, um, you, you can share your, 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 your prayer request with and ask for prayer for healing God um, do it and God will do the rest but it must be done God's way not our way God bless you Amen thank you for listening <laughs>